In our final episode, The Tale of a Feather, we'll investigate the end of the dinosaur reign and find out if their descendants are still with us today. Join us for the final episode of Dinosaur. For 150 million years, they were the absolute rulers of the Earth. Now available for the first time on video cassette, Dinosaur, the biggest story ever told, hosted by Walter Cronkite. You can own this episode of Dinosaur for only $19.95, or the four-part deluxe box set for only $69.95. To order, call 1-800-423-1212. Shipping and handling, $3.95 additional per order. with Walter Cronkite. Next on a &E. We all know that dinosaurs are not around today. They died out 65 million years ago. In this program, we ask why. After a reign of 150 million years, what happened? Did they fail to adapt, or were they just unlucky? Or have we been wrong all along? We will explore the intriguing possibility that dinosaurs live on in disguise. Dinosaur detectives believe they have found the clues that prove that dinosaurs are around today. Let's see. Paul, I always thought that eating chicken was, well, just eating chicken until I found out that some dinosaur detectives think that chicken, like all birds generally, are dinosaurs. That's a pretty amazing thought until you think about all the clues they've picked up so far. Well, when did it start? Well, it started quite a long time ago, back in 1861 in a quarry in Germany. Some workers found a small dinosaur and the perfectly preserved impression of a feather. The feather that was found in southern Germany caused an uproar. The 19th century fossil hunters, dinosaur detectives, were confused, for the feather should not have been there at all. The limestone rock dated back to the age of dinosaurs, millions of years before birds were thought to have evolved. <laughs> Searching frantically for more evidence, the fossil hunters soon found a second clue. But this only turned the puzzle into a mystery. The experts were thrown into total confusion when close by the feather, they found the complete skeleton of a small bird. Or they thought it was a bird. They called it Archaeopteryx, ancient wing. And this was even more exciting because it showed both reptilian and avian characters and there was of course uh, a debate which one it was was it a reptile with feathers or was it a bird despite its reptilian skeleton and this caused uh, a great uh, and sometimes dramatic uh, argument among different scientists because it turned out that it really was a missing link uh, between two classes of vertebrates, between two re the reptiles and between the birds. It really is an enigma in many respects. It shows, for example, um, along the forelimb here, three quite prominent sharp claws. You don't associate those with the wing of a bird. If you look at the tail back here, you see there's a bony spine. Those two features themselves are very typically reptilian. Also, if you look at the head of the creature up here, you can follow along the line of the jaws these little spiky teeth. These three characteristics are not typical of those of birds. The long bony tail, the dinosaur-like claws on the hand, the teeth in the jaws.
From the time of its discovery until the mid-1970s, Archaeopteryx has been regarded as a linchpin in the evolution of birds. The problem was identifying precisely which group of reptiles was closest to Archaeopteryx and therefore to birds. In 1973, the problem was looked at afresh by a modern dinosaur detective, John Ostrom. Starting at Sonhofen, where else, he looked again at the clues. Oh, well, it has such beautiful fossil material from that very fine-grained lithographic limestone. And it's almost like uh, uh, photographs of uh, things that once lived uh, in a lagoonal kind of setting uh, 150 million years ago. That exquisite material. It's a glimpse into the past that uh, I don't know of any other place that produces such wonderful, wonderful... I see the rock record as a vast library, but most of the pages are blank. There are pages that are just full of information, like the Solenhofen limestones have produced for us. My uh, fieldwork expeditions has been tracing down blank pages because uh, there have to be pieces of information on those blank pages that simply haven't been discovered yet. And uh, I've been very fortunate in finding some evidence on some of those blank pages. The mine in Bavaria has filled in some of the gaps. Because the lagoon in which the feather and skeleton were preserved is unique, the remains of Archaeopteryx and other creatures are perfect in every detail. of the preservation that we find in the Solenhofen material. It, it's exquisite. And one of the most remarkable of all finds, of course, are those specimens of Archaeopteryx, uh, uh, in particular the Berlin specimen, which shows such beautiful detail of the feather imprints. It's, it's remarkable, a kind of photographic image almost that uh, is uh, preserved uh, from 150 million years ago. Only six skeletons of Archaeopteryx have been discovered over the years. One found in 1951 has a most curious tale to tell. It is kept under lock and key at Eichstadt Castle in Bavaria. It held a clue to dinosaurs as the ancestors of birds. For 25 years, this specimen was classified as the dinosaur Comsognathus, simply because it had no feathers preserved around its skeleton. Was Archaeopteryx really a missing link between dinosaurs and birds? A crossover point at which the dinosaur family split, and one line, millions of years later, became true birds. Our detectives are still examining the evidence. To get more clues, Peter Vonhofer has made a cast of this fossil, and by coating it in gold, he can examine it in detail under the electron microscope. One of the most striking features in Archaeopteryx is that it has teeth, and these are in fact reptilian teeth. I'm trying to compare the teeth of Archaeopteryx with the teeth of Compsognathus. Compsognathus, of course, is a small dinosaur, which uh, is supposed to be closely related to Archaeopteryx. The small dinosaur Compsognathus may hold the key to Archaeopteryx ancestry, could it be a close relative? Well, if you take a quick look at the anatomy of something like uh, Compsognathus, this nice model, which is actual size, and look at the anatomy of Compsognathus, or as you see it preserved in that uh, fine specimen, uh, compare that with uh, the skeletal remains of Archaeopteryx. And there are so many skeletal details that one has to conclude, I think, uh, that they came from a common ancestor, 
They evolved from the same source 